All right, I'm gonna take you through high level usage and operation of a John Deere 2032. This applies to the 2025 as well. Um, this, is, this video here is just gonna show you at a high level um, quickly uh, where everything is, why you, know, why you need certain things and why you don't. So if you look at the operator's uh, station, first thing you're gonna notice is that there's the joystick for the loader. So this is a, a typical loader joystick. Left and right is the curl and up and down is forward, is forward and reverse on the stick. And if you go all the way forward, this is a feature that a lot of people, if you're new to tractors, don't realize it's there. You can push that for, for the, or farther forward and that locks that, that arm down. That is to float the bucket. So when you're grading uh, topsoil, you're gonna have your bucket floating and going, you're gonna be in reverse. So that's how you would do that. And you pop it back, it pops out of the float position. So that's how you operate the loader. Um, there's a couple more uh, things below here in the foot area. This is the draw bar up and down speed. So if you're gonna use a draw bar for a three point hitch accessory and it's heavy, you would, it would slow down the speed. If it's a lighter accessory, you would increase the speed with this left and right turning. You can use a socket or a wrench to turn that. This is your loader lockout for transport. This is a lockout safety issue. If you're gonna transport the machine, you wanna lock your loader down, you put that lockout into the lock position and you can't operate the joystick on the loader. Uh, this is your oil uh, fill plug area. This is your seat adjustment lever on the left. This is gonna go forward and reverse, or sorry, uh, forward and backwards slide on the seat. And if you look at the operator's steering area, you've got your throttle. You've got your PTO switch on the left, and you've got your blinkers left and right, and you've got your light switch below that. So again, light switch, blinkers, PTO. Uh, steering, you're gonna use this um, knob here when you're steering if you wanna uh, maneuver the machine quickly. You can still steer it with the steering wheel if you'd rather. Um, below here, you've got a parking brake and you've got a uh, cruise control. The right is a cruise control, left is a parking brake. And the way those work is you put the gas pedal down in the forward uh, direction and you pull up on that and it'll just simply stay, just like a lawnmower, stays down. You hit it again and then it pops off the cruise control. Parking brake, same thing, put the brake down on the left, push those two down, and you pull up on that orange handle and it stays. And it's like a ratchet, so as soon as you push down on the brake, it'll release the brake. Um, outside of that, you've got you know seat belt over here, which is retractable. You've got your draw bar up and down on your right side. So that's gonna, that's gonna move up and down, right? Draw bar is gonna come up and down with this lever here, and it can do the height based on your preference when you have an accessory on there. And this is gonna lock your height, your max height on the draw bar. So you can adjust this if you never wanna go, you know, past a certain point uh, on the height. And that slides up and down if you turn that. Uh, cup holder, obviously, these are just hand grabs on the side. And I'm gonna take you through um, the other side now. Okay, you got your um, four wheel drive lever. You push this down, that's in four wheel. You pull it up, it's in two wheel. Uh, over here, you've got your differential lock. Typically, you just put your foot on this and you stand on it and it locks the, the rear differential if you're spinning on one side and you want to spin both wheels. Uh, you got high and low range and neutral, that's for this. And then you've got your PTO uh, selection. So when you engage the PTO over here, uh, you can select to have the mid PTO, the front PTO, or uh, PTO off by moving this lever here. And that is pretty much at a high level, the operator station. So in the backhoe area, if you've got a backhoe on it, this is the 46 backhoe. Um, stabilizers down on these levers will drop your stabilizers on the left and the right. And then you have the bucket swing left and right and uh, boom up and down. Bucket curl left and right on this guy and then uh, boom in and out on this guy. So usually there's a diagram there which tells you what those levers do. If you are not sure and you've never operated a backhoe before, um, use a diagram and I'll give you some help as to what, what levers do what. The way backhoes work is there's different styles um, on the levers. This is obviously a John Deere, so it's got the John Deere um, controls, right? So these are what these are going to be called the John Deere controls. And if you've never used one before, uh, give yourself like an hour, maybe two hours, and you'll become really good on it. They're not very hard to learn. But if you've never used one before, it takes a little bit to get used to. So just take your time, keep the throttle down, and uh, you'll be just fine. 
And outside of that, I think that's pretty much it. You've got this grill guard over here. There's gonna be a couple pins. You can pull that grill, those two pins off. That grill guard tilts forward. And if you wanna get into the, in the hood area, you're gonna pull up on this lever here. And once you do that, the hood just raises up and it's gonna stay up by itself uh, once, you, once you get it up in the air. So that's kind of a high level uh, overview of the controls, how you, how you use the controls. And also there is a uh, bucket uh, indicator on the side. Not many people know really what this is for. There's a rod on this one and it just has a slot. But what this indicator is supposed to give you an indication of is when you raise the loader, you want to kind of know where the bucket is as far as being level. So if you look at the ground right now, the bucket's level. So when you raise that loader, um, you want to use that arm, that indicator arm to see if your bucket's level when you've got it, let's say all the way up and you can't tell. So that's what that is. So it's just an indication of how level your bucket is based on the position of the loader. Um, outside of that, you've got some quick disconnects on the loader. So if you wanted to take this loader off, super easy. You're gonna, um, you're gonna look at your manual, obviously how to do all this stuff, but basically the procedure is you pull a couple pins and then you, you tilt the loader and it tilts forward and then you disconnect these hoses. Uh, these hoses are just quick connects and they would just um, disconnect. You put your caps on and then you're, you're good to go. There's no loader on the machine. The back hose is, is kind of similar. It's, it's a quick disconnect. There's a couple pins uh, in the front these two pins there. When you pull those out, pull those out and you first stabilize the stabilizers, um, you're gonna you're gonna basically just uh, stabilize the entire backhoe like a tripod. Pull those two pins and then you're gonna lower the backhoe and it's gonna come out of the slots in the back. There's a couple slots down there you can kind of see where they are, but um, that's it. And then you're gonna disconnect these two guys here and you're gonna keep the backhoe obviously lower than the machine and then you just drive the machine you know forward. So that would be at a high level, how you get the loader off and how you get the back hole off. But again, refer to the operators or the owner's manual to really understand that a little better. Um, you do it once, you can do it a hundred times type thing. It's not hard, but the first time you do it, it's gonna take about 10, 15 minutes just to, just to kind of orient yourself with how the machine is set up and how the pins work and stuff like that. That is pretty much it. Um, the backhoe seat also comes up, so you can do that with it. And if you don't like the seat being down, you leave it up when you're operating it, and that's, that's just fine. Um, but that, that's, that's pretty much on a high level how you would operate the John Deere uh, 2000 series, the 2025 or the 2032.